Welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have a first-time guest. However, I've been on his show, Ryan Bailey, star of the Army Hammer documentary in which you went to acting class with Army Hammer. But other most people know you from your very popular podcast, So Bad It's Good. You also have a great Instagram in which you do really funny stuff on that. Ryan Bailey, well, welcome for the first time. I know this is a dream come true for you. Uh, this is like Just welcome to Juicy Scoop, and I want to say he offered to bring us coffee, and guess what? We took it. They took it. Yeah. We took him but, up on it with a very detailed order. <laughs> All you kids out there listening, this is like being waved over to the couch by Johnny Carson. I'm telling you, this is, and you don't even know that reference, I'm sure, but I, I think Heather might. And oh, this I is do, of course. So, I mean, you don't know. You can tell already. We were talking yesterday. I was like, I've been in a kid in a candy store all like the last day. So thank you for having me. And Juicy Scoopers, what's up? So let's. Let's get into it. Now, I know it's Thursday and people are like, Heather, could you stop talking? No one cares about Halloween, but I have to give some strong thoughts about some mm. things. Heidi Klum, who's been throwing this party for like 20 years, dressed up in this worm thing. And her daughter went for the first time. And the daughter's really pretty. However, a lot shorter than her mom. Yeah, that's odd, isn't it? Like, Well, I don't know. I guess she doesn't have a relationship with her biological dad because... I think she sees Seal. Seal as her dad. Who was actually her stepdad, who, dad, who then Heidi had three more kids with, but divorced him, and now she's married to someone else. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, you know, this this party has been, I guess, like a big PR thing and, like, sponsored she's by a lot of people. She's the queen of Halloween, but it's, like, self-monikered, like, King of Pop was with Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she self-monikered herself. It's like, I thought you were just a supermodel and you're, like, a judge on America's Got Talent, but now it's the queen of Halloween. And But, like, that's the title she's given herself. When she was married to Seal, and she would make him wear all these, do this. <laughs> and then they got divorced. I'm like, this is part of it. It's like some of these girls that are so into Halloween that forces their guys, and I get it, we're in this world of reality stars and social media, so Halloween, especially in L.A., has become a whole nother thing. It's work. I got to go to yeah. the party. I got to take the photo. I got to you know, be something unique, and it's like a photo shoot for yourself, and then you're forcing your guy to do this. It's like... I don't think that helped in their marriage. I really don't. Well, do you ever years... think of like Seal now, like how ecstatic he is on Halloween? Just like, to he's be like, like, just watching Netflix, like the yeah. rest of us. He's like, I'm not dressing up at all again this year. It's lovely. We just pass out candy. I know. And I was worried about her last, this latest husband. Was he, <laughs> and I don't even know if we know if this is true. Could you look this up, Annie? <laughs> I saw that she's the worm, and there was like a fisherman off. <laughs> yes, Maybe was, he's the fisherman. I think he was. Is the current husband well, the fisherman, and then she's the worm because he's caught a worm, well, or something the worm will cut the fish. How she thought of it, it's like, I guess oh, when there, you're going through the This is like the, the Super lit- Bowl Jennifer Lopez half. There's going to be a Netflix documentary like halftime yeah. because you're going to see six months in advance, people are presenting Heidi with ideas. And the thing is, you said on your Monday show, you're like, you know what? It's okay. We get offended by the, we don't get offended by costumes and all that. The worm has gone too far. We've gone too <laughs> Like, come on. Can we get offended at least as a nation by this? Because it's like, she's like, it's cute. It's funny. It's very, you bring people together. I, it's very happy. And it's not. It's scary. I, I do want to say when I said I was not Offended by Machine Gun Kelly and um, Machine Megan, Gun, Megan Fox. <laughs> Megan Fox. That, <laughs> Megan um, Markle, yeah. That, that they were a, a priest and she was like a slut or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I they This person said that I bash the Catholic Church. I'm like, I'm not bad. I'm Catholic. I'm, I'm not <laughs> bashing. I'm just saying, like, I don't take offense to idiots dressing up as my religious thing. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't bother me. And then the, the same person was like, I'm sure, you know, if it was Buddha or someone making fun of um, Allah, that would bother you. I'm like, no, but like, I, I appreciate if it bothers someone. Like, I, I'm just saying, I just don't. I think I'm desensitized too. I just, there's, yeah. I, just, I watch so many Housewives and I live in Los Angeles. So I yeah. see so many weird things every day that nothing, like, nothing phases me anymore. Yeah. And the machine gun cat, like, I just, the whole thing about them is like, they're so punk rock. But are you that punk rock where you, you're you like, the next night they did Pam Anderson and Tommy Lee. And it's like, yo, yeah, I have those. Like, how, like, when, anyway, do you, when does it stop? I just want to finish on this yeah, yeah. Heidi Klum. Um, I don't think this would be a fun party to go to. I don't think I care to go. It's in New York, so I wouldn't go. And I just like, and then I guess she finally took off that outfit and then just like, just had like 
the worm head. Oh, cute. And like a cat suit or something. Ugh, I saw her spinning with Questlove. Like she, he was the DJ at this event and she was there like, Zuh, yeah, yeah. So it's like she got the photo ops she wanted to get yeah. in the worm outfit. I mean, Entertainment Tonight even actually had a microphone on the floor and she was like writhing on the floor. And if you're writhing on the floor at any party, that's wild. And I mean, the reason she has it is because it's, you know, a big yeah. party for for PR companies and stuff. Yes. Like it's branded to yeah. the belt. Which, by the way, do you think the branding company is like, Heidi, are you sure the worm? We don't know if we want our product affiliated with Larva. Here's Megan yeah. Fox first as like a girl getting communion, okay, from him. That's then they accurate. Then they went as Tommy and um, Pamela Lee, which – you know, she has a beautiful nose job and and beautiful teeth, and that's what Pamela Lee had was the perfect smile. And she and just perf- got a new beautiful boob job. So it is it is kind of perfect, and he looks so much cuter as Tommy Lee than he does in real life, yeah. so good for him. It's like the ghost of Christmas future for these guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this, is, this is some juice. There's this girl that is, you know— an OnlyFans model. Who the fuck isn't except for me? <laughs> and her name's Juanita. And she was dating. She was seen with Tristan Thompson dating. at one point. But now she went home after a Halloween party with Tyga in her. This is the grossest outfit. So she basically has the tiniest, tiniest string bikini on, ass out yeah. with the tights. Just <laughs> gross. Like, just gross. And then she did that, this mistake, which is an awful, well, maybe that, I think. Is that supposed to be blood or is that like a, is that a, um, is that some kind of condition? I just want to say, um, I saw this a lot at Halloween and it was red lips, you know, but then like they drew some blood coming down the mouth or like a smear. Scary. It doesn't look good. No, it looks it like you look... just got like roughed around in the yeah. back of a Corolla or something. Yeah, you it know? doesn't, like... it's not a flattering look. And so. But. I mean, Tristan is such a dirtbag that, like, I just love that these women seem to just pop up. These OnlyFans models, like, Tristan right. seems to love. I mean, they all seem to love these OnlyFans models. Anyway, she went as a, an essential worker. Let's let's remember that. <laughs> Thank you. To, this was – my sister's a nurse, and she was actually really appreciative of this. Oh, that's yeah, so great. this was great. When your sister was – your sister is a nurse in real life, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just have a question for you. Um because I thought about it, you know, in memoriam of, you know, the years past during the COVID, like when, yeah. like first season COVID. <laughs> and do you remember when all the nurses and essential workers were doing like really intricate TikTok dances, like 18 people and like 35 yeah. moves? And like, I was just, you know, I'm kind of like. I remember, and I can say it now, but I didn't say it back then. But I was like, I didn't say it first season. I can say it the sixth season. And I'm like. Okay, were things that dire that like eighteen of you could like get together and be like, bump, 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 bump. I'm <laughs> flatlining in the other room. People are like, da 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 da. Like I'm, I'm shocked at any job. Like they have these at like law offices now. What they'll do, but yeah, like the nurse thing was wild because you're like, did she ever do a TikTok dance with people? She has, and. She, but, but she has my niece and nephew to also my niece and ne- my niece and nephew encouraged it as well. So there was an encouragement. No, but from she, the she kids. do it at the hospital, not just her doing it at home with her kids. Did yeah, it at the hospital yes, in the greens yes, with yes. like multiple people. Yeah. Um, I have no problem with it. I don't. I, I think it's I great. Think dance I, is beautiful. I think the, that they the had art. fun, but I just feel like I feel happy that now three years later I can say I thought. <laughs> Fuck, like, really? You have the t- I don't have the time to put that together. I, I, and I'm not, like, saving but lives. But you also kind of impressive? Like, thank God they're this accurate. Like, this is, like, must see how they sew people up. Like, they can actually remember these dance moves. Yes. I can't remember any dance move of anything. I just saw the funniest thing that my friend um, Ian Edwards, he's a hilarious comic, he just did something where he, he talked about how, like, maybe essential workers shouldn't dress up for Halloween, because he has, and behind him in the TikTok, he has like a, a like the 
the death face. Like he's like, I don't know about like someone walking in, you're like, how are you feeling today? And like and you're like in the ICU. Like, maybe that's maybe yeah. don't dress up. Like you he's like, you have the most expensive outfit. Your education yeah. allows you to wear the scrubs. A lot of people are doing sexy nurse and wearing scrubs on Halloween. You have the outfit, like you don't need to dress up on Halloween. Yeah, and like also hospitals don't need to do casual Friday. Like I want to see yeah. a doctor in their normal doctor outfit, no additions at all. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so she's a big, you know, popular girl. And and they said, I guess she does collect. Is Tyga Wait. on OnlyFans too? Yes, he is. Tyga so is. Do, so he just has sex with girls. Tyga has a whole cottage industry that is not even involving rap, allegedly. Okay. Like, that's what's so, you know, because. He's also like, you know, how he he has the one song, Rack City, that I love, but then also infamously known as like dating Kylie Jenner. Like that was how I felt he started. But then the IRS kept repossessing his cars and repossessing his cars. But now he has all these different streams of revenue. And one of those is OnlyFans. But the thing with OnlyFans, you can make like seven figures on OnlyFans. So this guy, I mean, at least puts it out there. It seems like he's doing okay. Better than people that actually have successful rap careers. So no Uh, offense, Tyke. And and also like – How great is it that, like, your one-night stands are also benefiting from you guys filming sexy stuff together? I mean, that is... You know what I mean? That's the business acumen that it takes. These these are the Bethany Frankels. Like, come have sex with me, and we'll do also, like, a collab OnlyFans video. (laughs) Is that the pillow talk afterwards? You know I could see you into my OnlyFans stuff? Like, I wonder when that, like, offer is made. Just, like, I... Just give me a blowjob. I will tag you. (laughs) And that's, like, that's worth... That's worth more than you giving me five grand. That's gold. I mean, that's yeah. money in the bank. Absolutely. Can you take that to Wells Fargo and so, get like a loan? Like yeah. I'm, I'm eventually going to be on Tyga's OnlyFans and get a loan based on that I feel knowledge. like the new scene that has to be done is you remember that scene in Boogie Nights yeah. where he's trying to get money – he and his wife are trying to get money so he can leave porn and open his stereo yeah. store. <laughs> Squad fod sound. And then yeah. he's like, just tell me what I need to write on this. And <laughs> and the guy's like, no, we can't lend money to a pornographer. <laughs> like, now they're like, um, okay, <laughs> hi. And then put how much you make. Now they're, now they're probably a loan app yes. in LA. That's like, you know how there's that thing that's like, like, you can also write down if you get any money from child support. And this, and then it's also like, and your OnlyFan money. Can you, you can put that down too <laughs> no. so I can get you this home loan? If OnlyFans would secure you at least a six figure loan, like yeah. right off the bat. Um, anyway, good for this girl. I just made her Very life proud. talking about her. Also, okay, <laughs> explain this. Tom Sa- Sandoval from Vanderpump Rules yeah. went as Rachel. <laughs> no, wait, being as her Ra- name's Rachel, but it's Raquel. And- okay, uh, went as Raquel being a being a fan, a fan of his. Oh. Well, it's right? a, it, well. So the third day of BravoCon to take you guys back, Raquel Levis from the show, who used, used to date DJ James Kennedy and rumored made out with Schwartz at Sheena's wedding, um, dressed in the Tom Tom sweatshirt and like you know, I think it was maybe for the panel day and had the glasses and the exact outfit that Tom has on here and. Somebody posted this and said that, like, she was thirsty, she was a fangirl, da-da-da. And Katie Maloney, who, of course, has, you know, the connection with Schwartz, wrote, she's always been a fangirl from the beginning, and now she's after, like, the Tom or something. Yeah. And Raquel then wrote back, I am a fan of the Toms, and I do support all of their businesses, Tom Tom. So she, like, leaned into it. Supposedly, we're getting, like, the villain edit of Raquel this season for season 10, and and the – the people think this is actually set up. Like, come on, you guys. This is not really. Because then Sandoval dressed up as this for Halloween night and right. posted it everywhere. So people are like, this, you're this get, can't be You're real. doing this so that we talk about it and then the season will premiere. But I told you earlier, I'm like, I've talked to them and there really is this divide it's- in the cast. And it really does stem from this what was this amical beautiful 10 year friendship we're going to love each other forever divorce yeah and it's not so lovely anymore and it it and you know uh people like Katie and on Katie's side are hurt that other people on the cast have they believe encouraged this relationship between Raquel, Raquel and, Schwartz. and and Schwartz and you know but anyway it all does add 
up to a juicy season, but it really is real. Like, I will really say that I know these, the like, person that gave beasts. Sandoval this idea for this outfit for this night. It is completely real. This this thing. Well, who gave, and, yeah, who gave, well it's it's actually uh, a juicy scooper. One of your listeners. Uh, I don't want to give out her name, but she actually got me on to like listening to you. Yeah, and she was hanging out with them and said it would be really funny, and so they dressed up as that, and it actually took off. But this is. 100% real, you guys. This wasn't like, I'll do this and you do this. But that's what's so scary and lovely about Vanderpump Rules is that they're in their 30s and they're still act like you would think this is over at high school. And it does get me excited for season 10, but that's just because this is all real. Like, Katie's right. really upset. Raquel kind of seems like she's loving this. And Raquel dates many people this season. Not right. The Schwartz thing I'm hearing is just like a drunken makeout that was kind of like, oh, you should, you should do this, you should do this. But I hear she dates multiple people this season. Good for her. And she's, oh, I mean, I'm excited yeah. to have her. Have and her then um, I love DJ James Kennedy. I saw him at BravoCon too. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and I had a good time hanging out with Katie. And Katie's got some romance currently happening in her life. Yeah. New, ro- like, not just the one person. So I think I'm excited. By the way, Katie is the best she's ever. Like, Katie looks hot. Like, yeah. Katie looks awesome. I, like, talked to her briefly at BravoCon, and she made fun of my mustache. Yeah. So shout out, Katie. But, like, yeah. I- I've been through a divorce, too. Like, it sucks. And imagine, like, I am so thankful that when I went through my divorce, I didn't have any kind of TV opportunities. Right. Like, I just had my parents yelling at me. Could you imagine if you had then social media on top of that? Yeah. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to exist. I think people were positive about them breaking up, but I love, I love <laughs> I just, that this is whole like hard. Like people really genuinely like them breaking up. That's so hard to hear, though. Imagine being Katie or Schwartz and well, hearing. I think that they did because as people watching it, it was like it was shocking because they were that couple that had been together so long, and you just thought they were just going to be that couple that you Ate know candy just in gonna, bed forever yeah, watching Polly Shore movies, but also kind of like miserable, and then to have her really realize like. You know what? I do want more for myself. The like, Kelly Taylor, I, I, I choose me from Beverly Hills 90210. Yeah. That, you know, like she chose herself just like Giselle uh, with Tom Brady. Yeah. Like these women are actually doing what's best for them and they suffer the brunt of the emotional hurt, I think. Yeah. And Schwartz, unfortunately, has such charm that sometimes guys will always be more sympathized with just in life in general. But Katie actually put her heart into it and actually had to make probably the toughest decision for somebody to pull out of a relationship that he probably probably would have stayed in yeah. for the rest of his life, but it wouldn't have like hit the buttons that she needed to hit in terms right. of love. No, and I'm so glad that it all happened before they had kids and they're still young and it also makes They just had the dogs. It also yeah. makes for a great show. I mean, what reality show has a couple that's been married for 10 years that both stay on the show and get divorced and we can kind of watch what happens in their friend group like that to me is freaking juicy and i don't care if and none of them pick up a shift at sir or pump i don't wait I don't are you telling wait are you telling even, me they do not work at that bar but i'm also saying i don't even think we need to pretend that they do anymore yeah exactly i, I would really rather fall, i would rather follow their lives as yeah. trying to hustle trying to get houses trying to get brand deals i would yes. so much rather see that because me too. that reality is nobody's doing that and it's their actual reality. Oh, no, we can still just keep the... We don't have to change the name. But no. But, like, we don't need to see, you know, them going in the back and acting like... Or or putting any fake storyline. And then Lisa, line. Lisa shows up and you have to slow down the show to explain what happened to Lisa and the last... Like, Lisa, what happened was... Honestly, I love, I love Lisa. I think she's great. I don't think we need to see her on the Not show. Not at all. Like, you don't... You slow down the show when you have her on. Put her back on Beverly Hills. Put her back on... I like... I love Lisa Vanderpump. I just think the show is not about her anymore. Right, because she comes and then everyone has to... You're right. Everyone has to explain what's going on. Yeah. They come to her house and she's like, do you want a cup of tea? <laughs> yeah, explain to me once more. <laughs> exactly. Raquel. What? I told you I'm shot at the brother you, married, you were married to Katie and then... Yeah, I mean, come on. Like, I mean... I don't understand what I thought Katie and Tom would last forever and I married them. But Ken, now Ken stays in the limo now. Like, Ken doesn't even get out of the Rolls Royce when they shoot scenes. Like, she's always popping out of the Rolls Royce and going, like, Ken's in the car. Listen, I think Ken is the greatest trooper because I, when I went to this thing with Lala to celebrate it, this a big um, event for um, Robert oh, Shapiro's son. Yeah. 
And they were there and they were at the table. And I'm like, he's still so sweet and out and like dapper. And then and then she called me later because I said we were waiting for Flo Rider. It never came. And then she called me that night. And Wait, she goes, did you say did waiting Flo- for Flo Rider? Oh, yeah. And he never came. I've been to like five <laughs> events for Flo Rider. Flo Rider. He never comes. And so then all of a sudden my phone rings. I'm home back in Woodland Hills. And she calls me. And she's like, did he ever show up? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, Flo Rider. I'm like, no. I go, where are you? And she's like, oh, we went to the polo lounge ever. I'm like, you then took Ken <laughs> to a second location. Like, I can barely get my husband, who's 20 years younger than Ken, to, like, hang out at Adrian Malou's party for more than, like, he two hours. He had to put on a tux for a pretty woman thing. It was, it was, it was a casual suit with no tie. Anyway, everyone was doing this joke, which was really fun. It's the spirit bag that you would get of a thing, and they did the fangirl and includes sweatshirt and social media drama. And that was really funny. Okay, so, wait. (laughs) Okay, here we go. Here I am. I'm pretty woman here with uh, (laughs) Jeff Lewis and his boyfriend, Chef Stu. And a lot of people were wondering if Jeff Lewis was pulling a Luann. I know. He was in (laughs) fatigues. And when he walked in, I was like, oh, he put, like, dirt on his face. Like, you're crawling on the ground. You're a, a combat Marine or whatever. And, um... So, I just want you guys to know, he was not... See, this is how we're so ready to get enraged. Yeah. Do you really think Jeff Lewis would purposely do blackface at a Halloween event that was going to be photographed? Like, No, but I, I will say the dirt makeup made him look cuter. Like, I think he's so super cute anyway, but it, like, gave him, like, a nice, like, tonal and, like, well, like some shading. You just turned him into tan, Mom. You know he's going to be tanning, like, every day. I like next- him. I like him tan. And, um, of course, Chef still look great. So I was Pretty Woman from when they go on the date. Oh, I know. On the, the fancy the, date. Did your husband do the, with the, the pearl, the We the didn't necklace do that box? because my necklace came in a plastic bag from Etsy. So I didn't have, like, a beautiful <laughs> thing to do that. But I did... Have it on, and we did a couple of videos, and we went to Adrian Maloof's, and it was fun. But I will say, like, I mean, there was a time when I went to even more parties, and it is fun, and you feel like you accomplished something. Like, I did a, a costume I've wanted to do for a long time, and I never wear my ha- hair up, and you I look great. fucking amazing. Yeah. I wasn't wearing, you know, some average outfit that anyone could be like sexy pirate. I was wearing something that's like kind of iconic, which is what I wanted to do. And I had fun, but I'm like, I'm glad it was just one party. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't go to like 10 parties and three different outfits. And you could have done the pre Julia Roberts when she's the prostitute mm-hmm. with the the strappy thing. Then the next party could have been like the in between Julia Roberts. And then this could have been the last one if you did three back to back. Right. Well, so now you gave someone else an idea. I'm sure a lot of people will do this next <laughs> just, year. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. So a lot of people will steal the idea. And I thought people might not know and be like, Oh. Are you a princess? Are you a queen? But like 90% of the people knew it was me. And, um, oh, and then I saw Dorit at the party and I was, came out was after. Was PK there? And PK wasn't there, but I, I, who I recognized with was Phoenix. Phoenix? That girl is a star. I know. She's so cute. So I see her and I'm like, and then I see Jagger and I see this girl looking down um, with like a princess wig on. And I just assume she's the nanny, right? So I, they're sitting on the curb, and she's, like, opening up candy for the kids. And I go, are you Phoenix? Is that Jagger? And the little girl goes, yes. And I go, I know your mummy. And she looks up. She's like, hi, Heather. And I'm like, oh, it's you, Doreen. Like, I, I go, you look so young sitting there. I just figured you're like a nanny. Like, you know, and of course, like, Dorit is a really involved mom. And, of course, you yeah. Know, so I'm like, so of course she's not going to miss out on, like, trick-or-treating with her kids. And the neighborhood that we were at where Adrian has this big, fabulous yeah. home – but it's really good for trick or treating because even though they're these big fabulous homes, they're not too far apart. They're not like hidden yeah. hills where it like so it's like you can go and hit a bunch. And they're all and, big candy bars, I'm sure. And it's everyone's a nice super neighborhood. decorated. And so anyway, so she was really sweet. But um, it would be great if Phoenix was like, "Get me another drink and make it fast. Come on, let's go, Heather. Go, yeah." She's I, I, love her. I know when she was like to the when that one time when um, PK was like making like you shouldn't be wearing those roller skates or whatever you're gonna Why, call. daddy and Why? then she's like daddy you're only making her less confident stop it 
<laughs> Mommy, don't listen to Daddy. You can roller skate if you want to. And I was like, I told her, I'm like, I love that. I, I love, love when she called like, little Jagaloo, Mama Bear, Jagaloo, Phoenix. Jagaloo. Um, so cute. Okay, so then this also happened oh, where yes. this, I think this is a whole fake. Now you think this is a setup. This is a total setup because she went, okay, so Kim Kardashian had this amazing avatar outfit, you know, like up there with the movie level, which these people have all the access to have someone make it perfectly or get any product that they need because this is Hollywood and they're the queens of Hollywood. So she looked great. She goes to Tracy Ellis Ross's birth, dinner birthday party. Thanks for inviting me. Whatever. We only did a series together, but fuck off. Um, anyway, so, and then she's like, makes a joke about how she showed up and no one was dressed up. It was just a normal dinner party on the Saturday before yeah. Halloween. But then she went to the P. Diddy party. Yeah, because we have so those looks of her looking she, lovingly at P. She Diddy. was party hopping. And I don't think she bothered to confirm whether it was a costume party or not. Yeah. And then it made her look more real. That's the yes. whole thing. Oh, my God. Look how relatable, even... relatable queen. Mm-hmm. Relatable, but, yeah. I mean, her plan was not to stay the whole night anyway. Yes. She was going to party hop no matter what. And this just made it easier, actually, for her to probably bolt after, yeah, you know, it wasn't like, first I'm appetizers. Go yeah. 16 hours of makeup for Tracy Ellis's Ross's 50th birthday. She yeah. was going to three other things with other celebrities. Yes. So she knew. And also, this got pushed out as the major story. So she got, it was like twofold. She got to look yeah. cool at whatever party she went to later. And she got this story right. that makes people love her. All right. And then she's like, to the sweetest soul I know. You just, come on. You barely know each other. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, yeah. P. Diddy. Like he was there. Way too intense. Um, okay. Let's move on from Halloween. So I thought this was interesting. This comes from Perez Hilton, but Kanye West cannot sell his white, white lives matter shirts because it's trademarked by ironically two black men. And it's kind of a great story in that they, these people set out to trademark it never to sell it. But just to make sure yeah. that it couldn't be sold. Yeah. And so then he did make the shirts. And then when they said, hey, you can't sell these shirts because we've trademarked it. That's when he went to Skid Row and gave them out. And Because and, he can't sell them. Yeah. And Gap actually is supposedly donating all of his clothes now to other like, you know, the Goodwill won't even take his clothes. They had like an edict down from Goodwill. But like the L.A. homeless are like decked right now out in like yeah. Yeezy wear. Like, I mean, I mean, but that's kind of scary because don't you think then like homeless people are going to be picked on wearing these shirts to get their shirt because no, it's like a collectible? No, they, they're going to. No, it'll be fine. Okay. And then it'll just be tossed. But I mean, his whole look is is, you know, homeless chic or whatever. So it all works it's out. It's scary as hell it's with the big everybody. rain boots and he always looks like a zombie now. It's like, it's not, I just can't believe this is fashion. I think, did I have a picture of him at the, maybe I didn't bring it on. Okay, well, I saw him at the soccer game and it was just like, and they show her at the soccer game and I'm like, she looks over and at the kid's soccer game and, and Kanye's there and his rain boots and his like, Shirt, his sweatshirt that looks like he's it's like a, a professional painter and they just picked him up in front of Home Depot. And I'm like, <laughs> and I go, she just has got to look over and be like, what the, f- what? what? This is not the guy I married at this, you know, Venetian palace yeah, and like three locations Italy flower wall the whole thing and this is where you like I always say like Kardashians are so everybody's like they're so aspirational really like no matter how aspirational you think Kim is she has to wake up every day not knowing what Kanye's done overnight like this yeah. will be oh, it's the, the remainder of their lives it's it's the worst um okay Meghan Markle um you know, every day, every time she has an episode out, yeah. Page Six writes about it, and and then Megan Kelly rips on it. Okay, okay. You, I don't know if you yeah. noticed that pattern, but anyway, so I noticed this article yesterday, and I read it, and it was from Daily Mail, and Daily Mail is not a fan of hers, <laughs> and so they they love to write the yeah. things in it, like <laughs> Megan Markle details her whirlwind morning routine in the Montecito to home, and they mention it's you know worth whatever eighteen million or it's eighteen thousand square feet or both or whatever. And what it's like for her to get up in the morning and, you know, it's just a whirlwind because she has to prepare Archie's lunch. Sure. Um, and then she has, she has to give Lily a little bit, a little bit of food. And then Harry helps bring down the kids. He helps bring down <laughs> Archie. I'm like, bring down, put him on your hip and walk him down the steps. Like, And so I was kind of like, okay, girl. But then when I saw the article written about Megyn Kelly, like, with, like, visceral, like, just <laughs> hatred for Megyn, I was like, okay. 
I maybe Megan Kelly's jealous <laughs> because she's because she's the bigger Megan. I don't know what is the deal. Like Megan Kelly's like an intelligent woman. I think she is out. Like I this is what I think. I did one video where I kind of made fun of the fact that someone wrote about her speech and been and was and took a quote that was like so mundane and i was more making fun of the person that yeah. like the speech was lame the speech was the it was like those generic speeches where you know she got up Meghan Markle and she was like um we need to use our voices to see that there's so much <laughs> potential in the world like it was like yeah. it was like that kind of yeah. stuff and then the way the article was written that I made fun of the article because I'm like, yeah, we know that. Oh, this is what she, Meghan Markle said. Children are our future. And they were like, oh, Meghan Markle says children are our future. And I was just like, let, OK, come on. Let like, them lead the way. <laughs> yeah. And I, but I was but I was more like you're the idiots that are writing on this stuff. Like you don't have to listen to her podcast. You don't have to watch her Netflix show. You don't have to buy his book. But like to just I now I think that if I saw Megan Kelly, I'd be like, listen, it's now coming, becoming kind of gross. Like, just, just, uh, we get it. It's a cottage industry of hate, though. It, like, yeah, you know, right. like, it's all, it's all, it's like the OnlyFans thing. Like, now this, people are making money off the hate of this person, and then we can make money off the hate of Megan yeah. Kelly. And then it just becomes, that is the commerce cycle, I feel, with all of this stuff. But I, I just want to say, in the defense of Meghan Markle, okay, <laughs> this is her podcast, and this is her life, and her reality is that her morning is, is busy. Since before she had a kid, she only knows what her life is like in her Montecito home. Yeah. She did not do a wife swap with a mom who has four kids in a two bedroom house in the middle of Oklahoma. And she's not relating to that because that's not her reality. Her reality is before I had kids, my mornings were not as busy. Now that I have kids, I have to do all this stuff, whether it's nannies and, and, Harry's help or not, that's just her life. And that's what her podcast is. It's talking about her life. So if you don't want to hear about her rich life, like, that's fine. But, like, the, the Megan Kelly, like, hatred is just I – mean, and I, I realize now, you know, Bethany Frankel was going off on her hatred for the Kardashians <laughs> and Megan Kelly. And then once she was – once I kind of called her out on her hypocrisy, yeah, awesome. now all it is, all now, it's only positive reviews. <laughs> it's cooking – it's happiness. You've changed it's, the course of the future. <laughs> she literally brought out a product that she liked of Skims. Like, she's like, you know what? These socks are fucking amazing. I love these Skims socks. <laughs> like, she's only saying, like, positive <laughs> shit now because she realized, like, it was just like a switch. Like, she got so much press from being hateful. And then when people are like, ew, now it's like, and I wish, I just wish the people that <laughs> like to consume this stuff as I do would be as eyes open to, like, yeah, I mean, and again, like you don't like you don't have to listen to. I don't listen to Megan's show, but if people that listen to Juicy Scoop do and they like it and they like that she has a calming voice and that she writes out everything she's going to say and it feels like an audio book and you enjoy that and you like to imagine her chasing little, you know, gingers <laughs> in, in on her like seven <laughs> acre home before like Harry comes home, like then just do it, like yeah. like just. I mean, let people be, but also, and, and real quick, because this is from the Daily Mail, which is I like my morning, evening, and afternoon news. Daily Mail always screws me, though, because like you'll be reading it and think you're really getting news, and all of a sudden you'll cry, like you'll catch like three misspellings in an yeah. article, and you're like, I'm reading the Daily Mail. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> you're like just like, oh, yeah, that serves right. me right. They don't yeah. fact check. But I mean, I, I had a little bitterness and just like because I, you know, have done podcasting so long and I'm like, of course another person gets in and of course another, but now I'm just like, whatever, it's fine. And if she creates goop and you spend $2,000 to go to a Meghan Markle archetype weekend and you choose to do that with your money. It's on you. The YouTube, it's on you and go do it. Yeah. Like go do it. You people. Follow on, your bliss. That's what I like. Follow rip, your bliss. Pe I don't. Yeah. People ripped on people going to BravoCon. And I'm like, what about the amount of money that men have spent going to like baseball games in a lifetime? Like who cares? Like if it makes you happy, just fucking go. I'm deeply in debt from BravoCon, by the way. Like, I mean like that, but it made me actually happy. And people were walking around happy. Somebody called it Firefest because of one day on Friday. And I'm still like, everybody I saw was flipping out of their minds happy. Like they were, they're having a good time. Right. They loved it. So, you know, but, um, okay, so here we go. Well, let's see what else. Okay, Randall <laughs> Emmett. Now, 
he has an assistant who's suing him. And all this information of what is in this assistant's lawsuit, if you had read the original LA Times article, yeah. it, it, he was interviewed yeah. for that article. And now he has sent, is planning on suing. And what he's suing Randall Emmett for when he was the assistant is – he um, he's a black man, and that's important because he said that there was you know racial discrimination. That he used words that were very offensive to him, referring to Cardi B as ratchet and using the N word when referring to you know yeah. Fifty Cent, and that's all hearsay on this guy's part, whatever. But he did. But he also said um, that he was instructed to go and. They he checked out of a hotel room, and he was instructed to go back to that hotel room and collect. A brick of cocaine from the from yeah. the um, safe, and then he was driving in Puerto Rico with it, and he's like, "Oh my god! I mean, what if I get pulled over? Like, I'm going to be thrown in Puerto Rican jail for the rest of my life, and who knows what will, what kind of discrimination might happen because I am a more vulnerable person, being a black man driving a car with drugs, and also like prostitutes and this and that." And also he was Muslim and he said that they made, he referenced making fun. Now, of course, Randall's people have said, we deny this. We're going to fight this. And um, what did he, do we know how much he's suing for? I don't know how much he's suing for, but we're in this wave of it. I mean, kind of like Erica Jane in a sense, except that Tom was behind that. But there's going to be a wave of lawsuits that this guy is going to be dealing with now. I think yeah. this is the first of many. But even this guy has like voice recordings of Randall of like, pick up your phone. Pick up your phone, man. You're my only friend. Right? Like those were actually in the original Amy Kaufman article in the LA Times. Right. So there is a lot of – I mean this lawsuit I think, you know – has merit in a, in a certain, you know, these things actually did allegedly happen according to this man. So it'll just be interesting because I think this is one of many, many lawsuits that Randall will be facing. Well, first of all, for the LA Times to have written this guy's story, there had to be a lot of proof of it. Yeah. And then for an attorney to take it on, there has to be a lot of proof of it. So I bet you know. Sutton re- read the whole article too. <laughs> I'll say, I'll say. I did. Huh? I did. I Ryan, I read the whole article and I was flabbergasted. Well, why because would you read I, the article? I have ran into Mr. Emmett at the Elton John. <laughs> you oh, at the, the, the Elton fundraiser. John. Yes, I did, and I was there, and I had a table. That I spent a pretty penny for, and I was happy to do it because I like helping children that have AIDS. Would you be willing to take Randall Emmett to the next Elton John AIDS fundraiser, uh, even with all of the article that you just read? You know, I stand with the victims of Randall Emmett and the victims of Erica (laughs) Jane. However, because we're on a show together, I can move past the fact that I don't like Erica because I'd like to stay on the show and she brings some flavor to it. You're a single lady, uh, Sutton. Would you ever consider Randall single right now? You know, the breakup with Lala. Is that your type? I think the things with Sanjit didn't work out. If Randall made some kind of proposal, would you be into a date with Randall? You know, I'm still (laughs) waiting. I'm still waiting for Garcelle to introduce me to her friend. Or was I supposed to introduce Garcelle to my friend? Wait, who was it? Someone it was, had somebody no, hanging was, no, in the wind. Remember, it was, it was, Dorit was like, I'm going to introduce you to a oh, friend. Oh, Dorit has you a friend. very classy, Garcelle. And Garcelle's like, I keep hearing about this friend, and I keep hearing about this friend, and we never saw the friend. I never want to set up anybody. No, that would sounds awful. Because it, even if it works out in the beginning, eventually down the line, it's the, potentially not going to work the out. The potential of it working out where two people, like, end up actually getting married is and staying married until you die it and then anything short of that it's going to be your fucking fault oh yeah then you have to choose like have to you which, oh. have you ever even recommended like a pool man like like <laughs> oh. i literally people go oh my god i love your cabinets i'm like we will never recommend anybody like it's so awful because you know so many people depend on referrals but it's like in la or there are certain friends that would just constantly bring up like or people that you're like i know if this does not work out perfectly it's going to be like well you know that one heather she's the one who told me oh. about to date Randall Emmett, now look at me. I love that people kind of consider me like uh, a knob and an idiot because then it's like nobody asks me an opinion. Like, cause I, you're right. Like, I don't want to refer anybody. Like, and I wouldn't even, <sighs> like, that would be horrible to refer even just like a storage facility. I, 
Okay, so good luck to him. Um, this girl was on Zoe 101, Ooh. and she talked about Dan Schneider. Now, we know I talked about Dan Schneider so much. He was the king of Nickelodeon TV. Loves feet. Uh, loves feet. Uh, Jeanette McCurdy with her famous book. She called him the creator, never called him by name. Um, we, I, I think people thought when they told him, hi, here's $7 million, can you leave now? That there must have been something really, really bad. So far, though, in his defense... There hasn't been someone that has come forward and said, like, he touched me, molested me, sent me a picture of his dick at night. There's none of that. But what there is is that he was, like, mean. And also, in this particular case, the girl said that he would say, I need to be there for the fittings. And he would sit sit behind a curtain, and then she would come out in the outfit when anybody else, and you've been in TV, too, as an actor, is you go to the wardrobe. They give you a few things. You they decide what looks good. They take photos, Polaroids, and then they then yeah, yeah. you're waiting in your trailer. And then the dress that they chose is the one that I'm going to wear for this scene. And like that's it. However, when I had Maitland Ward on, and she was an actress in um, Boy Meets World, yeah, she wrote a book, and she's like, when I was doing that show, which was a sitcom, and she was of age and. You know, she was like in her early 20s or something. And she would, they, there were several men that would say we, that were producers, and she would have to come out in the outfits and try. And it would be like lingerie, like because she was a sexy neighbor or whatever. And so I think that was a really gross thing that a lot of producers in the past would get away with. Yeah. Um, So she reveals that in this podcast uh, where she was a guest on Real Pod. And, um, but I kind of like, I don't know. Like, well, you're I'm, right. There's been no smoking gun. We've just heard all of these kind of like, he was creepy. And it's yeah. like, well, and he you was know, demanding. also welcome to Hollywood and men. Like, creepy seems yeah. to be a big thing, and especially when you're behind yeah. the scenes. But like you said, like, even with Maitland Ward, people are like, yeah, I want to check it out. Come on out. Like, the Dan Schneider stuff, there has been no smoking gun, even though we have all of these stories. Like, we allege, you know, we can believe what we want, but there has not been that one person yet to completely shut it down. There is, I believe, still negligence, in my own opinion, from, you know, was it Nickelodeon or wherever, well, where they, why, they knew he was creepy. But I think that's why Nickelodeon was like, here's $7 million, goodbye. We don't, yeah. you know, we don't want to be associated with you. Thank God there's nothing. I had, I worked on a Dan Schneider show. <laughs> Whoa, Revel! When remembered. I was twelve years old, no, I was, I was I was like thirty three. He didn't even show for the fitting at all. He's like, no, I trust it. And um, actually, the wardrobe girl, ooh, oh. the wardrobe girl was a woman, a woman I knew. Oh. And, and nothing happened, but I'm like, wow. Oh my god! I bet god. she has some stories. I wonder. I mean, I like now. I, I'm oh my gosh. She was like a family friend. Like she, our families are friends, and she went on to be it. And it was so funny because when I got the part, she was like Heather. Like, and I'm like, oh my god! Like she was older than I. Yeah. But like our families like all went to the same church and stuff. And I was like, oh, so it was Drake and Josh, and I was a mom. Wait, a small part, but like a real That's, part. Yeah. Of, and and I was a mom waiting in line to go on this like ride. And and I remember I'm sitting there with standing there with Josh and Drake in the scene and they're like complaining about how long the ride is and I'm the mom and I have this kid that's a brat or whatever. And so we're, during the breaks, I'm I say to Drake, I go, my son is named Drake too. He's two years old or whatever. And then Drake <laughs> Bell goes, um, well, that's actually not my name. It's my middle name. My real name is Brian. And and Josh, who's been on the show for like eight years with him, goes what? And he goes. <laughs> Yeah, that's not that's my name. that was my middle name that we just like made my stage name. And he goes, I've been telling you calling you Drake this whole time. Like, like, that was the beginning of the end for Josh and Drake. Like they they were never the same. After they were that never day. the same. They were like I probably Josh was like, look, I don't even fucking know you. And then when Drake Bell like did some questionable stuff when he went With on the road to high school again. to high school places, learn from the best, Dan Schneider. No, but like the and the Dan Schneider stuff, the the YouTube video of the foot fetish, the other thing on Zoe 101 where they were drinking like what was it? Goop they were using goop pops and then they were popping it and it would just <laughs> land perfectly on a girl's face. And then she said, you know, we as kids didn't know that that was what it looked like for a girl to get cum on her face. But all these adults 
knew. Yeah, it was the hidden meaning, yeah. And I re- I mean, I've said this before, but when my kid would watch like iCarly and all this stuff, I would be like, why are these people like, why are these girls have like hair extensions and eyelashes at 12 and talking about their boyfriend cheating? Why is all these themes like more adult than they should be? And the kids at home like don't know. They just see kids. So they're like, yeah. so it was a really weird, sick thing. But it's still not enough. To, they did the right thing. They just got rid well, of it. Well, and we've never That's really had right a Dan Schneider interview, right? Like, he's never come forward or wanted no, actually, to speak about guys, this. No, actually, guys, Tuesday, Dan <laughs> Schneider and I are going to talk oh my God. about when I was yeah. cast and why he didn't come into my fitting. <laughs> what if that's the why? only topic you just keep hitting again? Okay, back to Drake and Josh. Like, did what? I tell you the story about yeah, the middle Dan name? Schneider, yeah, why, <laughs> why didn't you want to know which striped sweater I was going to wear as the mom in the line? <laughs> Dan, let me reenact this. I'm going to take my clothes off in the corner. I just want you to watch this well God damn it um no it is weird that dan schneider is kind of like the for a time he was like the jerry bruckheimer of kid shows like that's what yeah. also is another thing like he had a cottage industry of and anything he brought so much money into yes because he just kept creating these shows doing spinoffs um you know yeah and he wanted and he wanted jeanette mccready to like have a spinoff she talks about that in her in her book and you know so yeah, I uh, those shows are why because you do. Uh, I have a niece and nephew, and when they were younger, what they would watch, it would be the same thing of just like that's insane. And, and especially coming from an acting background, where you you know you know the setup, set up punch, yeah, and like yeah. the rule of threes and all this stuff, and it's like written like a multi cam sitcom. But then sometimes it would go so far off base for a ki- of a kid show where I'd look around and go like, did my seven year old niece just catch that? Yeah, but they don't though. No. That's the thing that was so creepy. So um, speaking of child actors. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gets a child more work than a little girl that has a voice like a Boca Raton realtor. And that is Lindsay Lohan. It is. If you have a kid, honestly, if you have a kid who has a scrap, a scratchy voice, or if you're a, an attractive woman with a deep, scratchy voice, you can play a hot detective. Yeah. Always. Remember Angie Harmon? Yeah. Was a model with a scratch. Like, all you, you can be as gorgeous as possible. But you will be cast as a hardcore detective as long as you have a scratchy, deep voice. Or, like, I mean, you had the Kathleen Turner back in the day. Yeah. And she had that, like, and she, you know, there was, like, a sex pot quality. But, like, a Lindsay Lohan scratchy voice. It just, anyway, she did an article and uh, interview. And she said, I wish that social media did exist when I was growing up because then I could have controlled my own narrative more, which I thought was really interesting when you think about it. It's interesting. Because because when people have scandals or things that happen, um, nowadays, if someone was to say, you know, like like I had this girl say awful stuff about me on a TikTok, like oh, the yeah, worst. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, first I was like, just ignore it. It's pissing me off. Just ignore it. Then when I was reading misinformation in her video and the comments... I was like, well, yay. Like, I don't have to sit around or call a publicist. Like, I just went and did my own thing. Yeah. And then I, like, let it go. And so with her, she she did have the publicist and stuff. And, and there were things that maybe she feels like when, when all that stuff was going on where she was going through trouble. I mean, remember when she was dating um, Sam? Oh, yeah. Samantha. Uh, was, uh, Samantha Ronson. Samantha DJ Ron- Extreme, Samantha Ronson, yeah. I remember one time seeing the two of them get in a car. Like, I was leaving another event, and Guy's Nightclub, remember that was, like, yes. happening? And I saw them, like, <laughs> hop in a car, and I was like, oh, my God! And I started to, like, chase them, because I was so obsessed with her being, like, having a lesbian relationship yes. with Sam Ronson. And so, anyway, I don't know that, you know, she thinks that it, it could have gotten her in more trouble. She could have re- done some really... Um, awful tweets back then she could have done some weird videos back then who knows maybe it I mean Amanda have been Bynes good. was in charge of her Twitter account when everything was going down I think the other side yeah. of that though is exactly is like, is like when she was in that vortex which they all were at that time yeah. it was like Paris Hilton Lindsay Lohan if you study pop culture you know this period of time where they just kept getting arrested kept getting arrested if they truly were in control 
she likes to think that she would be able to speak as clearly right. as you did in your video combating those things. Yeah. But in reality, it would be like, you know what's going on? You know what I uh, You know what yeah. I hate? You know yeah. what I – like she – it would go, I think, in a poor way. Right. I just think she wants to believe that it would have saved her in a lot of ways. I just I – th- I truly believe that everything works out the way it's supposed to work out. And so, yeah, I don't – I think I mean, it would have been She's making a Netflix uh, comeback. She has a Christmas movie. She has a uh, Christmas movie. movie. We talked about that Christmas movie, which is – Basically, what did we say it was? It was, it was like Overboard yeah. meets Paris Hilton reality. I don't know. But good for her. Yes. Um, yeah. I've, I've met her on a few occasions. And when you she, do a great Ali Lohan. When she did, she guest hosted Chelsea lately. And, you know, she ch- children <laughs> actors are highly intelligent. Because they, you know, and they have to be able to read and memorize and all this stuff. And be around adults. And so she she did the show for, and she was, so she was our guest host for like one day and so professional, so nice, funny. I mean, she's great. So hopefully she's staying, I don't know if she's completely sober, but, you know, not having any troubles really. She got married. She... I mean, I, there's been some really great Lindsay Lohan. My favorite was when she um, tried to kidnap the um, Middle Eastern children from their parents. Oh, yes. The Be- video. She was like, no, come, come. And, and they was, were scared. And they told her to get away. like Hilaria Baldwin, but with Middle Eastern voice. <laughs> like, like she was like, um, how do you say? Do you need help? <laughs> Um, these children, these children are being taken by these people. And the woman's like, these are my kids. What is wrong with you? And she's, I'm going to film this because, uh, you know, uh, how do you say um, we're going to get a um, shelter? It Cucumbers. Was, I loved that. Um, oh, that was a great Also, uh, speaking of guys, I used to be the general manager of a nightclub. There was a bottle service club called Monroe's back in the day off Melrose. Yeah. And I would like, I, it was so, it was when before Lindsay Lohan was 21. And yeah. And we like, we would let her in. Like this was before all this, like it was, it was just a known thing. You let those people in. Right. Like you, you know, it's a uh, Lindsay's with us. So, okay. Yeah, of course. Just come in the back door. You know, yeah. that whole period of time, it was like when Christina Aguilera would get hammered when Christina, you know, like it was a very interesting time and I'd be up cause I was a nerd of pop culture. I would be up just refreshing Perez Hilton every, you know, like just to see what's new and what's new. Like was it was like when Misha Barton was dating, um, uh, greasy bear and, and oh, it was like that period of time. The, greasy bear was, that was Brandon Davies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Brandon Davies' uncle was married to Kim Richards. See, this is like the 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 Kevin Bacon of it all. And I mean, even like you go to the Kardashian family and how it's all interconnected with David Foster and all. Yeah, I mean, somebody could do a whole. And it's map. all connected to Heather McDonald because Brandon yeah. Davies' aunt is called is Dana Davies. <laughs> and when I was at USC. <laughs> She was a theta, and everybody was like, are you going to go to Dana Davies' birthday party? And I'm like, no. How do I get invited to this, like, elaborate, fabulous party? <laughs> like, because everyone was just like, want to be a friend because she's so fucking rich. And um, I didn't get in, but I was at a I was at a SAE party, and she was at it. Anyway. It all. Anyway. It all. This is, you are the Kevin Bacon of pop culture. I really am. Okay. So let's Ooh. talk about the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. The we, we are done with it now. We thank are you, over Lord, with thank it. You. Um, I will say one thing I forgot to say on Monday though. When that ha- when that part happens where Kathy Hilton goes and you no the, that was a, well I talked about that touching the lump in <laughs> her throat like oh please Kyle it's about you right she touches Kyle, the lump in her throat Kyle yeah and so she's like um. She's like, oh, and you know what you were saying, Lisa Retta? Ah, you're preaching to the choir. You were right there with me. Okay, now everyone's like, you know, why didn't Lisa Retta record? Yes. And I think there's two reasons. One is that Lisa Retta is not, is, is, or there's a couple theories of thought. Lisa Renna is not premedit is not as premeditated as we thought. Hmm. Um, didn't know where it was going to go, so in the beginning she was bonding with Kathy, and they were bitching about the other cast together. And then it went worse, and by that time they're walking out of the van. She's got her purse in the car. There's no play. Now she's in the house. She locks the door. She never. She just never 
at that point didn't even think to record it because I don't think she's ever like secretly recorded anything before. I vehemently disagree with you. Okay, like, wow, I think wow. I think this I think ten I think she's think I think she thinks she's playing like 4D chess, but it's like just actual checkers. Yeah. And I think she was like really excited because she knew Kathy was in an agitated state. My okay. like my thing was like, why did Kathy like Kathy is not as bumbling as people make her out to be, obviously, but like I would think Kathy, even in that agitated state, would be like, there's no way in hell Lisa Rinna is coming with me. There's no way in hell. Because I think Kathy knows that Rinna's a shit stirrer, but I think immediately no, she don't. knows how to get into fights with all these Bravo Instagrammers, Rinna. She knows how to like do all of this, like she's putting herself in eight boxes. She's so thought out, I think, that this okay. was completely thought out. Okay. Sorry. Just disagree again. Because it, when they're going to the Caribou Club, there's a moment where <laughs> Kathy goes, I don't think they're going to let me in this outfit. And Lisa Ren is being really nice. Uh, yes. And she's like, Kathy Hilton, you know. And Kathy even says to Lisa, we've known each other for a really long mm-hmm. time. Like, we never really, they never had issues before this trip. Well, neither did and, her and Denise Richards. And I think, so I have said this before, but I think that, so she has a, uh, you know, listen, we've all vented and talked to people. Yes. And then been like, and by the way, like off the record, this is between us, you kind of say that. Or you write a text and you say, don't talk about this. No bueno. Yeah, no bueno. Just to like confirm like this is between us. And at that point, Lisa Rinna had already sent texts saying what went down and was like, I don't care that she's asked me not to say it. I'm going to say it. And then I think she shared it with Kyle. And then Kyle did that post. Oh, you better believe we're going to talk about it. And so the whole thing is, did Kyle give the bat signal to the Fab Force Five to say, unleash the coyotes, talk about it all. And then she was like, oh, shit. I didn't really think about what this would do. It was like, it's the same thing that every housewife does when they go on a show and they think, oh, um, I'm excited for for the world and my husband to look back and see what a dick he was on the show. <laughs> when actually the husband never, there's never been one time where a husband is portrayed badly on a show and he gets nicer. He divorces them. <laughs> He divorces them because he has to hear from all the Bravo, <laughs> Bravo people that are like, you're an awful oh, husband. I mean, immediately. And so they're like, oh, my God, I don't even want to defend myself. I don't want to say I'm sorry. Like, I just want to retreat back. I mean, maybe the only person I would say that. PK actually has raised an esteem with the Bravo audiences. In fact, like they, a lot of people think PK is like, you know, his new chomper is like, Puta Mita, that's where we go. He's always popping up. And like, people find him charming now, where in the beginning but they didn't. He has always been very sweet and respectful to Dorit. We have oh, never yeah, totally, seen completely. him yes. like ever be rude. Yeah. And I think anytime they catch a husband, being a little bit dismissive or rude or like whatever, or... or or Shane from from OC Emily or any of that, it's like they launch on it because women want to see that other husbands are awful. It's yeah. their favorite thing. to Yeah, see. it's a pastime. It's their favorite thing to go. <laughs> oh my god, it's not. But then if they see someone that doesn't like, they you know will like them to yeah. an extent. So. Um, Anyway, okay, well, we may never, ever agree with this. Now, what is your prediction of the cast? Because you just came in with some scoop, and I said, save it for the pod. So, uh, Demois, uh, of course, she actually posted uh, a blind today, and uh, Bravo and Cocktails, I think, picked it up as well, saying that they are putting the show on pause. So it's not Rin on pause, that they're going to do what they did to New York and let it breathe. And, you know, which I would have, you know, you could see it going that way, too. You're like, OK, it's gotten too intense, actually, behind the scenes, the stuff we're not privy to. Obviously, you know, lawsuits have been threatened. There still is this Rinna, Kathy. I mean, Rinna still to this day, like, I'm never going to talk about it ever again. And then yesterday she's posting stories about it. She's posting this. What I did got, she post? Well, she posted the the receipts of like because Andy and the receipts. She Remember in the first episode of the reunion? Yeah. Andy's like, oh, I see you brought receipts. Supposedly they had filmed the receipts and Andy on his show said the receipts were actually involving the Elton John AIDS fundraiser and we had already hit that so hard. She says there was more in that that Andy is not saying. 
So we continue this mystery when she's like, it's supposed to be done. The season is over. We can all relax. And she's keeping this going. So I could see where they might need to put it on pause just to regroup and see where even all these ladies are with the with each other. Like, and the Diana Jenkins thing yesterday with like the the bot mystery. Yeah. I mean, I think Diana's one and done uh, by totally. her choice. So who knows? Yeah, I mean, there, she just there was no like fun or click or anything with her. Like, it, it wasn't just, right. and she just disappeared. So they towards said the they, end. They, they said we found a bot. It was someone in San Francisco, but we don't know anything. Yeah, it know. was like we know one, but they also pointed out that like they also had found so many overseas things, and obviously people were using VPNs to mask their identity. So Garcelle posted something just even this morning, going you know like pretty much alleging like there is still no news about this. There's not like she didn't post. We have found this person. Uh, we you know, and it's not just one person but they're saying they have tracked it down to it was like queen of the something underscore to this one account near the San Francisco area yeah so Diana's one claiming like I have done it I have Diana Jenkins I've solved the case and supposedly in this same uh, press release said you know more lawsuits are pending or more cease and desist or just more law like the the amount her lawyers have made this year off of this show has got to be astounding yeah, like I I don't know. They're probably going to bring in some new people. I talked to Dorit at the Halloween party and I go, here's the thing. I'm like – she's like, oh, you know, who knows? It's just, you know, whatever. So, and I'm like, I don't want to see anyone go. I am never someone that says fire them or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never want to see any of them And everybody go. I think needs two seasons. I do, except for D- I, Diana can go. Sorry. Yeah, but also I was still up until the cease and desist. I was still like every housewife needs two seasons just to relax into it to see if there's another side that might come out in the second season. I know, but I still can. You're I right. don't need to see Diana. Like, <laughs> But what about can we keep Asher? Is it Diane? Diana. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, so I think if we could just get one or two new chicks to – and also the um, – unfortunately, the Will Smith ex-wife, she's she, – She kind of disappeared. They're just – it was like it's not any fault of her own. She just didn't have any involvement. If she was, you know, driving the Sprinter van, then she would have a second season. Like she wasn't <laughs> at, in, in Aspen. There was no <laughs> way to her get footing. And like she – so she got to go to some parties. But, like, it doesn't show – it doesn't mean that Wait, she couldn't be Wait, I think she re- was in Aspen, actually. That's how, like – remember was she was, so like – wasn't she at, like, Kimo Sa- at oh, the I hat store? Right. And she, guess, like, But that's how in the background she was, right. was that she was there, but we kind of in our minds of, like, was she there? But it, like, kind of is a bummer because people are like, who cares about her? I'm like, it's not her fault. She's acting like a normal person. It's in a reality show. She just wasn't any part of the drama. But, Heather, as an actor, though, don't you think the Lisa Rinna, like, stuff – We've seen it. It's like an actor that is like a caricature of herself at this point where it's like there's no real in reality there anymore. It's like so extreme and so like Sunset Boulevard at this point where I just feel like you are forcing – like even as a soap opera actor, I feel like it's pushed. Yeah. Is there any – like I mean I just feel like we're seeing it again and again and again. Okay, so what is your prediction? If they – I still have this weird alleged belief that like Rinna was behind the scenes on some stuff that I don't think she should have been. If that can be proven, I think you automatically have to leave her. If not, like I've said before, leave everybody. L- like let everybody stay. Like I- I'm not the biggest fan of Rinna, obviously, and I'm not the biggest fan of Erica Jane. But also I want to see – like, why Why did we – Erica Jane talks about getting dick the whole season. We don't see a shadowy figure right. outside the pool house like, yeah, I'm getting dick. Right. Like, why don't we see – like, I want to see her on a date. Yeah, I, I want to see too. that. Yeah. Like, come on. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, Matthew uh, Perry, we talked about this. Well, we have not talked about it. We've talked about the book. I watched the interview with yeah. Dan Sawyer. And, you know, it was – you know, it was, it, it was really interesting. It's really sad and it's just – Something that anytime I've like read anything about addiction or known and own people in my family addiction, it's it's that first moment that they get drunk or high and they're like, now I feel normal. And it doesn't mean that you came from a family of abuse and it doesn't mean it just there's something in you that the first time that you get drunk or high that you feel normal that the addiction kicks in and another person can get drunk at 14 and wait another two yeah. weeks and maybe get buzzed again or whatever or have a normal life. And it's just a really scary thing as a parent because it's like, I don't know what 
my kids' reaction will be, um, you know, both two, my two older kids have gotten drunk and had drinks and seem to be fine today. But, like, I mean, I have another son that has not had anything and it's like i don't know yeah, like, like I don't it's really what that scary would be like as a parent to like think it's and so then hear scary these stories you because you just don't know like that was the part that stood out to me like the matthew Perry, like laying on the ground he goes this is what normal people must feel like all right. the time and you're yeah. just like what if you did like i I can't imagine what my parents were like thinking of that too, of like, I remember being like drunk as a skunk for the first time. And my mom had like during college and it was like Christmas break, my mom having to come get me and putting like a grocery bag over my head to catch whatever, like if I got sick in the car and like, she taught me a lesson the next day I had to work and she was like, I'm sick. And she's like, no, you get up and you go to work. This is what happened. Like you will fulfill your responsibility. And it taught me a big lesson that day of like, you know, don't, I don't know. It was just, it's really sad. And the Matthew no, Perry it, thing. I, it's, it's really sad. And I really feel like, you know, his his stepdad is um, Keith Morrison. I know. We saw those pictures. And I, I really thought, my God, they, no one thinks about what it must have been like for Keith Morrison to marry this woman who he loves, who every day is waking up struggling because her son is struggling. Like, it doesn't matter how rich you are. Yeah. And, you know, Kris Jenner said this to me, and I think this is so freaking true. As a mom, you're only as happy as your least happy child. That's what my mom, my, my mom, like not, I mean, that's not her fate. It's not famous. I don't know. But like, yeah, my mom is, but it means so, it means the same. So I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like that you, it's just so, Hard, and I mean, he does he does talk about that his parents were there, and he you know almost died, and all these times, and it's just like he's a colostomy. It's bag just for the love of it's God. just a shame, and um, but that's that's what I got out of it. I I unfortunately don't think there's that much juicy scoop in this book. But can you imagine Keith Morrison having to talk to Matthew Parent? Like, like did was there like Matthew? Like in that <laughs> Keith Morrison voice of like, where were you last night? You know, yeah. like in that kind of Dateline voice that just must have been. I, I just keep thinking I used to want to be Matthew Perry so bad yes. as a young actor. And like, a, I would have, I, like he said, he prayed to be famous and all that. He's a like, God, I don't care what you do to me. Just make me famous. But for all us young actors growing up, like when friends was like the biggest show on TV, I used to pray that I could be Matthew Perry. I used to pray that I could like, you know, just even land a job even close to that. And then to hear that throughout that whole time, he was only sober one season. That's the crushing reality of Hollywood is that it didn't matter. Like, you know, like not, he was going through so like hell the whole time. And I thought he was one of my heroes. Right. It's always like, I always say that about so many people, like when you hear something awful or what they're struggling with, my husband and I will be like, all the money in the world. Like, yeah. wouldn't trade, would not trade, like, no. And it's just, yeah, that, I remember that. I remember being in an acting class with this guy. And he's like, I see myself as a Matthew Perry. And he was wearing the bowling shirts. And he was, like, practicing the cadence <laughs> of the sitcom talk. Yeah. And, like, and you know, there were so many copycat <laughs> oh, French yeah. pilots. Like there was one in San Francisco and there was one it, literally in Anchorage that my friend got the last one season. There was one in Chicago. Like everyone's trying to do these yeah. copycat shows and trying to have that momentum and everything. And it, it was also just really amazing. Um, and also just like the, when they flash back to the Jennifer Aniston part where she was like, when she was brought up in 2004 after the show had ended and she started to cry when Diane Sawyer asked her about Matthew and she's just like, we didn't know what to do. And, and, it's, and that's what's really hard, like whether you look back and you're only a kid and you're like, why didn't I tell my mom that my brother was using or yeah. whatever the case might be. And it's like, don't – you need to forgive yourself because like they – think about it. They they – didn't want to end the show for all everybody involved from the grip to the whatever. Yeah. And they didn't want to betray him by being like, listen, you, you've got to take him off the show. He's got to have immediate rehab. And then, and they're just like almost like hoping every day that they can get through it and he doesn't die on their watch without them doing everything that they 
we're kind of probably torn inside. Like, how far do we take it? Because yeah. he's still managing to show up. And he thinks and he's, he's still keeping managed- this huge yeah. secret. He thinks he's doing the best job. at keep- And that's the thing yeah. that's fascinating about people is the lengths they'll go through, whether it be your Randall Emmett's or your, like yeah. the secrets that they keep that right. like later on you're like, uh, I didn't see that at all. Like, I, I was around this person. Life. Yeah. I was worried, but I didn't know the extent that I should have been worried. The hiding. Yeah. 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 And then when he said that he um, would go to the open houses and, and <sighs> steal from the from the Vicodin and everyone's medicine cabinet. And as a realtor, I would always follow the people and I was selling a house and they were like, make sure, you know, you never let anyone go upstairs by themselves. And I guess we did. And something was stolen. But it was a very rare red-headed Cabbage Patch doll. Oh. Al- no. It was bad. They, the people were fucking pissed. What? And I was like, was Matthew Perry selling that Cabbage Patch doll for drugs? No, but I mean, like, really? I was like, this is like a really – that's Now, like, most homes, I feel like, are, like, staged for this exact oh, reason. Oh, yeah. The Oppenheim group Be- isn't doing this. Yeah, yeah. Because, because it's like, yeah, you just don't have – like, well, but back then – People staging didn't even exist, and people would go in and um, so could could take stuff. They just sold the house I was living in, uh, me and my roommate, and the agency had the listing, and yeah. it was like right off Melrose and Martell, and really nice place. And they, they did these open houses, and I didn't even think. But like my home studio is in there, yeah. and I have a giant oil painting of Tom Girardi and his brothers from right. the auction. Right, and I have lingerie, and I have all of these like stupid memorabilia, like where like, and the the agency person, like I didn't even realize like the agency connection. The agency was like, we had a couple questions about the room. Um, People were scared. Like, you know, like people were squ- next time if you could take down some. Like, I would put pictures of like Diana Jenkins and stuff. Like, yeah. so I was trying to do like you know retail juicy scoop. You know, yeah, yeah. When I would talk about it. <laughs> I didn't even realize that like that would possibly creep people out of going into a man's room oh, and seeing just Erica Jane lingerie, just a bunch of Bravo products and a huge oil. Hilarious. Um, um, I just didn't know if you were made aware of this, that <laughs> Hilaria Baldwin, she too has a podcast. Thank God. Yes. And we listened to just a little trailer. No accent. But she isn't is she not... from, but she's from Spain, right? Like she's, that's where she's from. So how would she not have I a... mean, very funny though, like that she is not keeping up. I think it's just because, I, I think it's because um, Alex's not around. I think she created that whole persona to, <laughs> to, pers- Alec. to get Alec Baldwin. And I don't think, I've said this before, I think when it all came out that she really wasn't from Spain, even though he'd talk about it on talk shows, you know, my wife is Spanish and she's from oh. Spain and blah, 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 blah. And he would do the accent and everyone, you know, loved it. It was so funny. And when it got all revealed that she didn't and people were like, Did, was Alec in on it? I'm like, do you think he asked her about her high school career? Do you think he ever was like, so Tell what was high school like growing up in Spain? When did you fl- become fluent in English? He never fucking asked her. Oh. He didn't care. And so, but the little bit that I heard, she sounds. Oh, I very, mean, probably better. American like I'm from born. Kansas. She probably has more American of an accent than I do in like, and the thing is, she's just like, I just love that the further you wait, the more people forget. Like, so, you know, eventually if she just keeps just avoiding and avoiding, but I, I would have loved to have been on those conversations when the, yeah. when the first hit, cause Alex did use this at every talk show appearance. He would be wife Spain jokes on Stern on. Also, like, I, I love that. It's always outspoken and unfiltered. Oh, shut up. And you're not you're not outspoken. What have you outspoken? What have you talked about that's been outspoken? <laughs> outspoken a- and complete liar. Like what what have you taken a big stance on? The use of cucumber in a recipe? Like what has been outspoken about you? Like what has when has there been an article about you written like I cannot believe Hilaria Baldwin She blew the lid the lid off this. Yeah, yeah. no. Who cares? Um yeah. Okay, tell me, we're going to end on Winter House, okay. which I'm not watching, but I would like, I know a lot of people are. What is the scoop on Winter House? 
Have you, you're familiar with Summer House, right? Summer House, and I know okay. most of so these So this people. is a combination of like Southern Charm cast members and Summer House ca- cast members. They go to Stowe, Vermont, where Kyle Cook from Summer House, like he used to grow up like skiing with his parents. So they put him in this house. They give them unlimited booze, I'm assuming. Yeah. But we're seeing them now on the, like kind of having a little bit of that Bravo fame. So this second season is already amazing because Craig Conover from Southern Charm, yeah. he's like the pillow king and has pillow money. Yeah. So he he takes the main room with, with Paige DeSorbo from Summer House. Right. They're dating. And he gives Kyle and Amanda $500 each so they won't bitch about not having the main room. And you go, here's, here's, here's for your time. And he refuses to clean up. So he like binge drinks because his sorority buddy, or his fraternity buddy is on this show now. And Which one is that guy? This, this is one? the first season picture. The second oh. season, he he's the guy that wears a pearl necklace. Um. He's uh, his name's Corey, and he wears a pearl necklace. Uh, he's a double necklace wearer, which is always something to worry about. But they pretty is much he straight. Yeah, he and all he the wears, girls in the house. He like wears him right like now. a full pearl strand or just one pearl. One pearl necklace, a full pearl strand necklace. I've noticed that guys are starting to wear pearl necklaces, but Have I you? thought. Yeah, but everyone that I saw was a gay guy wearing a pearl necklace. No, this is Craig's fraternity brother. And so he's a new cast member. But it's really interesting because Craig is in this kind of King of Bravo stance where he's like binge drinking. He's stomping on tables like the Kool-Aid man. He's the guy, yeah, the with you'll see there to the right of I cannot believe that Paige has like ski um, jacket boots on. Those are so... (laughs) cute on her i'm I mean, dying Paige is right gorgeous. Now. but craig craig is like Paige will be in the bedroom with amanda laying down and just like it's hysterical because Paige had so much to say about kyle and amanda's oh my god who's this girl that has like like she, a globe on her um, inner thigh what okay, is that she's, she's got crazy she was tattoos the florist from summer house that did kyle and amanda's flowers and now she's on this show so it's like a oh, weird. Oh, and this is. Ew. And Jason's the guy that used to be with uh, Lindsay last season, and they had the trigger warning, like the the baby, the miscarriage. Uh, but anyways, yeah, Austin just came in, so it's basically just people binge drinking in a small house, and then waking up the next day and doing like man do man activities. They go skiing and like ski hard, and then the girls stay back and like talk with each other. But for me, it's completely fascinating. Just because it's the minutia of these like relationships, it's like big, like I find not as now coming off the Matthew Perry story, this is horrible. The binge drinking is funny to me in this thing because yeah. Craig. <laughs> by the way, sorry, I'm realizing now I'm to blame for this. No, it's just like Craig is like the pillow king and he tries to hold himself and like he's getting into fights like, Luke, if you flip in, touch Paige's hair one more time, I'm going to fucking end you. And it's just all this testosterone um, that I find hysterical because that's not how my life has been. So it's like just guys fighting with guys and girls talking to girls and I could watch it forever. All right. Well, good. She goes, I'm glad glad for you. I'm glad you you like it. I'm glad you like it. (laughs) Salt Lake, I I fast forward through some stuff too. Wow. Like a little bit. See, a for me, bit. this has been such a breath of fresh air from like the high intensity of the social no, media I, aspect of Beverly Hills. So yeah. I kind of enjoy like Salt Lake, we only have five women here, and I feel like that's another thing. Even Jen Shaw is coming off likable in these things where you're just like, I cannot wait for that flip to happen where she has to like change her plea so um to me it works on two levels where i'm kind of enjoying that each of these ladies like lisa barlow talking to her son and he's like fudge college mom that to me was hysterical like fudge college like that was like him being rebellious by saying the fudge word but not even i don't know i don't know for me it's a a refreshing uh breath after yeah okay it's good. It's just not – they're just not Beverly Hills. No, they're nothing. Just not Beverly See, Beverly Hills, Hills like, is the I Michael just, Bay of I feel reality like, shows. Like, yes, but I'm watching it all. I'm watching it all. And um, Wait, is there any show that you love to watch that you're like, I sit down and it like goes so quick that it's not – doesn't feel like work? Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills. Yes. Really, even when it was like – okay, so but Beverly – I mean, it's that's never true. been boring to me. I have never fast forward through anything. On Beverly Hills. And you probably went back and rewatched scenes too. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. I just think like there's just times where I'm like there'll be a new character on one of these housewives and they'll be like talking to their husband or t- talking to their kid or something. And I'm just like 
I don't care. Like when it, it's like the only times I fast forward through scenes is when it's when one person isn't with any other uh, of the housewives. Yeah. And it's like, honestly, I'm going to say it. I don't care. I, 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 this is so mean. Do it, please. I don't want to know about your parents, your elderly parents' health stuff. So, so you couldn't so go any, there any th- with Rena on that stuff. It's not you, that I couldn't go there. I'm okay with her talking, but I'm saying featuring the yeah. older person that's str- like there's. I've said this before. Like people, we there the women that sit down and watch the show, and they are women, majority of it, besides Ryan. They're women. I know there's a lot more guys, but we <laughs> no, it's just me. Don't want to see your potty training struggles. We know you think it's really funny. It's not entertaining. And every, a lot of people deal with like worrying about their elderly parents. So I don't. I I I just I, I never found those scenes like with uh, like rest in peace. My parents are gone too. Yeah. And there was a time I thought they were. Sh- I always thought my parents were so funny. Okay. And then there there was a time where like these people came and like wanted to do a show <laughs> about us. And they were like so bad on camera. <laughs> <laughs> they were so bad on camera and like so awkward and so guarded. And I'm like, it's why I think sometimes when comedians then get a sitcom about their life and then people act as those people, yeah. they're they're also not funny. Like yeah. there's times where you just telling a story about your family as a stand-up is such a funnier art form than seeing it like acted out. Oh yeah, because and so I the, think like yeah. you know, so I think like I get it, that's their life. So we have to see that, you know. Um, like, like to Dolores' mom being sick. Like, I feel for her. She's a good daughter. To me, it's just not interesting. It's like, I, it's depressing and sad. And we, so many of us are dealing with like, at this age, like parents going sick or getting Alzheimer's. I, but we have to show up because we got to be real to the show. But like, that to me is not interesting. I'd like to see more husbands. I'm bummed that like Beverly Hills, there's no men in it. Yeah, and why did they? Why did we lose on the reunion? Like the the men come for the other reunions. Beverly because Hills, you had Mauricio Piquet. Like, I mean, I love that we still have never seen one like of like Kathy's husband, like Rick. You know, like we've just seen pictures. But I mean, those husbands, I think like they don't even get brought out of the reunion this year. Well, I think because they wanted Kathy so badly that they she. Had a I mean, it's just like anybody that like. Gets a job. Like, I remember when I got my job at Chelsea lately, I was like, oh my gosh, I'll never ask to leave early for my kids and nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing. And then, like, a few years later, they hire Josh Wolf, who's like leaving at three o'clock to see his son's baseball game. And he was like, yeah, I told him if they wanted me, I'm leaving when my kid has a baseball game. And the kid was 14. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, they just, so I think she, she yeah. just was like, no, you're not going to see my husband. Yeah. He's not comfortable being on it, he's not an idiot. He knows he's not going to look great. He knows he could look older, fumbling, or just not. It's just not his jam. And I think PK and Mauricio like it. They love the t- limelight. Oh. So it, and it's and they come off great. So it's fine. They don't, you know. And then um, also, I think sometimes they go out to dinner with other Bravo people, and those men are like, "Stay the fuck out of it as much as you can." I mean, do you remember when? Who was it? It was Yolanda got into it with who did she get into it with? What Beverly Hills husband was, was like? Was it PK? No, was it? Because no, that was PK was with Erica Jane. Uh, well, I want to say was it Ken or something? It have, was it around the uh, limes? I don't know, but like it just it looks so bad. What's really bad is if the woman is being attacked by the other women, and the husband doesn't do anything <laughs> about it. Can. Uh, Oh, yeah, oh. Ken Todd was getting mad at, you know, like, we all know Ken Todd is, you know, so, their relationship is he's very protective yeah. of of Lisa Vanderpump. But now I think that people have been watching these shows for 15 years. A husband comes in and has probably had Real Housewife husbands, consultants type of people be like, <laughs> stay, I've talked to these people where they're no, like, I- oh, <laughs> these, they, we all know to stay in the back and, like, we don't get involved. We let them have their fights. We're having drinks in the back. We hate when the cameras come around. We don't say anything interesting. We don't get involved. And they're smart. But then you get the thirst traps like the Real Housewives of New Jersey that like want to go on tour oh, together. they're doing a comedy and, show. 
And so good for them. But also, like, I miss, like, and then you have the ones that don't get it yet for the first season ones, like the yeah. Aaron, Denise Richards' husband. Yes. Of like, let me explain about 5G to everybody. Yeah, yeah. And Mauricio's like, I, I just, I'm stoned just trying to enjoy myself around the right. cameras. And he's like, let me tell you about Faraday cages. And like, that's what I live for is and those moments. And you know that she, being that she's, you know, an experienced person and she was probably like grabbing his leg and then when they left the party, she's like, we are mic'd. Like we're she also knew. being followed by Big Pharma right now. She knew they were, like, doomed when he was trying to explain his weird business. Yes. And, like, you know, and thank God for OnlyFans. And now he takes photos of her, and she's, like, hard. Don't you love her OnlyFans journey started because of her daughter's OnlyFans journey? Isn't that wild? Her daughter started it, and then Denise realized it was a good pathway to go. Mm, no. No? It started because the daughters became 18. We Okay. And there's no child support. And I don't think a lot of people are going to Aaron's thing. And I think she realized I'm still pretty and I can make this at home and be with my younger daughter who's special needs instead of going and doing a movie in Canada. Yeah. Well, she used so, to come I mean, to the I acting think, studio. I that think I... it was a lot of things that lined up yeah. in which it just made sense for her to do it. Would it make sense to you for her to come back to Beverly Hills? If they make no 100%. cast changes, would you want to see her back? A hundred percent. Would you w- want to go further and bring like Camille? Brandy and Camille? How far would you go? I really like Brandy. I don't think she'd fit in anymore. But I think that, and I, but I like Brandy like on a girls' trip and stuff. I just don't think her lifestyle is like fitting in with the girls. Yeah. And I don't think she like has a connection to any of them. Um, I noticed that like Camille and Denise and like they do stuff together. And so it's like if they could come in together as ex wives, like there has to be a friendship. And Camille is cool. Like she's. And Camille, why, I mean, Camille is very active in Housewives Twitter and yeah. Housewives Everything. And, Sutton, and she wants to come back, of course. And so it's like, oh, yeah, they all the, they all want to come back. But Williams Sutton was go. collecting an army, it seemed recently, because she was posting photos with everybody. Camille, Brand, like, I'm like, Sutton is like getting file and ranks behind her. She started yeah. like taking people to like the, the Stevie Nicks concert, like old cast members. So I was like, what is going I on behind the scenes? I think they may scenes? have just seen each other there. But that's what a, what but a great that's picture, what's good. It's you know? Smart. Get the photo, exactly. And it's like, um, so I think, yeah, I think that that would be really juicy. But that's what I find interesting about the husband aspect. It's yeah. like, yeah, like, and that's probably annoying. That's probably annoying to Lisa Renna, too, because she's like, do you know how much, like, Harry fucking bitches at me when he even has to do one scene and make a blueberry pie? <laughs> Harry's going like, to do so, regional theater just to get away from filming. Like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, like, she that's probably also <laughs> builds to her resentment, you know? Yeah. And I'm sure there's times where Lisa Renna is venting to someone and being like, Harry fucking Hamlin yes! had to serve... We had to compost, okay, motherfucker? And that fucking, you know, Rick Helton, we don't even see him sip a martini, like, comes to nothing, doesn't... They don't even get to ask her about it. And if they do, it gets cut. Like, yes. why is someone like, wait, why doesn't Rick, like, why doesn't, I, there could be scenes. Because, like, if I was Lisa Renna, I would be like, Kyle, let me ask you a question. <laughs> do you think Rick is still bitter that Mauricio has the biggest real estate company in all of the world? <laughs> and when he had him join his company, you guys were living in a one-bedroom apartment. Do you think that bothers <laughs> Do they have that bothers but, Kathy? And then, like, yeah. And then, of You course, know that's all on the cutting room. Like, the Secrets Revealed episode for this season would be insane because it would yeah. be all Rinna, I'm sure, bringing up topics that they could not use. Yeah, but be- I think, I mean, I think Kathy, like, had that down. Like, he's not going to be in it. Yes. Neither is Paris and And Nikki. I want to promote my tequila. Neither is Baron and Conrad. Not one kid we've seen. And that's why she's like, that's fine. Make me a friend. And she also did have that relationship with NBC Peacock because the I Love Paris that she was like a lead on yeah. was on Peacock. So she so can she, throw her dick around. I do think yeah. she was saying, I'll destroy this and I'll just like all those ladies. Yeah. Like, all those ladies I've seen have fits. The only difference is this one wasn't on camera. But she did say, I'm just a friend, but I won't come back as a friend. If. If Erica and Lisa are there. And I think she's just like, I think she's fine either way. I think if they ask her back. And they don't come back. She'll have won the ultimate, like, thing. And if 
if they say, sorry, do you still want to do it? She can always change her mind or she can say, no, I'm not going to. So I think it's like Tom Brady in the off season where she'll yeah. be like, no, I'm not doing it. And right? then it yeah. gets closer and all the fans are clamoring because she really does seem to like the fan attention. Yes. Like I, you know, I'll see her pop up and just random posts that she's yeah. not tagged in. And so I think it could be that. And she'll be like, no, I'm coming back. I'm playing. I'm, I, got, I got to play. I got to do this season. I think even with that, what like about, Wendy Osefa, Okay. What about, oh my God, this could be so juicy. It's never going to happen, but it's a dream. Know. This is my dream of a cast. Okay. Kim Richards. Uh, Kathy and Kyle. Did I just, did I just quiver? Uh. Kim, Kyle, and Kathy. Okay. Denise, Lisa Renna, Camille, Erica Jane. That's it. No. Oh, wait, what about a Vanderpump? What about, oh, oh and Dorit. Dorit, Dorit. Dorit's just, Dorit's just, just there. Dorit. And she's just, just great. And listen, this is no diss against anybody else. This will never happen. But imagine, because we can't have 12 people, imagine <laughs> that as a cast. It would be, no. Th- and by the way, that should be Kyle's last season, too, with the Kim and Kathy, the, the, that. Kyle should be going in like football players or like, this is my last season, my last season yeah. going into filming. And they treat it like that. And yeah. then it would be just so exciting. And it would be brutal because Kyle would walk out of there just battered and beaten. And also with the Lisa Rinna stuff, I think there's a good chance of like a ghost of Christmas past kind of thing with bringing like Denise and all of these people Lisa has wronged over these seasons to come back and haunt her in Lisa's final season. Like this could right. be incredible. Like, yeah. Remember when Lisa Rinna said like, you know, that she the other thing is she does exaggerate when she's like <laughs> Kim is near death Kim's near death and then Kyle's yeah. like did you say my sister was near death and she's like <laughs> <"Your sister." laughs> the silent film acting face I don't remember, I don't remember saying that so then when Kathy said do you remember saying uh you're pre- you're preaching to the choir which I think is a pretty like specific line near death and preaching to the choir is a pretty specific line that I definitely think came out of those lips. Everybody, <laughs> check out your podcast. Give the spiel. Oh, a uh, podcast called So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey. And the Instagram account is the same. It's like silly memes, uh, you know, a bunch of guests, uh, reality shows, and not even just reality shows, other like kind of Netflix shows and things like that. Uh, also do another podcast of What the Kids Are Watching, where I recap uh, kid shows with Natalie Poucher, who I know you know, who's Heather oh, yeah. DeBro's old assistant. Yeah. And she has a beautiful daughter, and I'm the guy without kids, and we recap these wild and weird kid shows yeah. as well. And it's been really fun to do. So cool. Those are the places. Uh, just check me out, and you can find everything on my Instagram page. And this is just – Heather, thank you so much. You know what a big deal this is for me, so I appreciate it. Well, get ready for your life to change because it probably uh, will. I'm ready to get 30 new followers. So – no, no. Actually, this is – truly, thank you. You can cut this part out, but thank you. <laughs> no, like this was a big deal. Like, come on. Like, I told – this was – it was huge when you came on my show because I know you didn't have to do it. But this is like – you know, there are certain moments, like there's a certain like well, vision I, board moment. And if I you enjoy, do this, this is like huge. I enjoy your perspective and I enjoy talking to you. And I enjoy that you brought us free coffee that I'll never pay you back just for. just the free coffee. And you guys remember, go to heathermcdonald.net to come see me live. Most of the shows are sold out. This weekend I'll be in Texas with Justin. Houston is sold out. First show, Dallas is sold out. Sold out. But on second show, Saturday, 945, still a handful of tickets. And if you bought the meet and greet for any of my shows, the meet and greet is is meeting me, taking cute photos with me, telling me how much you love me, but that is always immediately after the show. Then Chris and I are off to Boston, November 17th at the Wilbur Theater. That is going to be epic, and I need to sell out that show, otherwise I'm never coming back. Okay? So that's on you, Boston, because Philly already brought it. They're sold out. And D.C., I think there's only like a handful of tickets for each show. And that is the weekend before Thanksgiving. So go get your tickets at heathermcdonald.net and change your life. Goodbye.